Some people ask for the design of the, an earthen house for me because they don't know how to design their own house. But I don't have it for anybody because I never design any house for other people. Because I think each house, the owner of the house is the best person who will decide their own house because they know the best. What do they want from that house? So mainly I will encourage people to decide their own house. I can help them, guide them a little bit. I have the simple principle to help to guide the owner of the house. And this principle, I made it up myself because I feel like it's very simple and easy. You can, you can do anything if you know you have idea, you just decide whatever you want. But for people who don't have the idea, uh, this principle will help some. The first principle is uh, ask ourselves, what do we want the house for? Do we want the house just to live, to sleep? Or do we want a house for working too? Or do we want a house just to show people that we have very nice and good or fancy or expensive house? So we need to make it clear about this with ourselves first. Because if we know we want just a house to live, we don't need anything much. We can make it small, easy, have bedroom, living room, kitchen, bathroom. That shouldn't be enough. But if we need to work, we need to have the working room for us too. And then if we want to make it to show other people, we make to make it very delicate, very special. When people look at it, they will see, they will think, wow, something like that. So it depends on each person. The second principle is think about make it easy. Some people de decide their house very complicated. Complicated doesn't mean it's, it's not always good or always in interesting. Sometimes complicated make it very hard, very hard to work, very hard to take care and spend more money. So if we decide something very simple, make it very simple, it will be very easy to build, easy to live, and easy to take care of it. So make it easy is very important because when it's easy, we have fun all the time when we build. Because earthen building mainly we have to do ourselves because there are not many people who want to do business on earthen building. And then the third principle is make it comfortable when you live in that house. It has to be, you, know, you need to feel comfortable to be in that house or feel convenient. That's very important thing because some house very expensive. They spend a lot of money. It's so big. But when you live in there, it's too hot. It's too dark. It's too humid. There's no breeze. So it's not interesting to be so if you think about what make it convenient, that will help us to make the house worth it, worth our money, worth our labor to do it. The next principle is make it very cheap. Cheap can be good too, if we do it good. When it's cheap, it doesn't mean it have to be bad. Sometimes expensive house look bad too. But if it's cheap, sometimes it's more interesting. How can we make some simple thing to be this nice? This is very important to think about. So when we make it cheap, it's good because it's not heavy on my head, on our head. Because we will not be in debt. Earthen house, we can spend as less as we want. We can spend as much as we want to. So it depends on how much do we want to spend for earthen house.
there are a lot of material, there are a lot of choice for us to choose. So try to make it cheap so it will not be a big burden on our head. And the next principle is make it useful every square foot. Some house, they built a big house, but it's, it's not it's not used, it's not be used easily because too big, too many parts. So it looks useless and then it becomes a burden for us. So if we decide to be able to use every square foot, the house will be very perfect for us. Spend less money and then we use every part of it, that means we will take care of it good enough. And the last principle is no waste or less waste as less as we can. How can we make it less waste? Think deeply, think it clearly about the material, about the size of the building, no waste. And then the kind of wasteful that wasteful thing that we never think about is, is waste of the time. Or waste our health, waste our feeling. This part we don't think about it much. For example, if we like to pee often in the night time, if we have no bedroom in the bedroom, we have bedroom very far away. In the night time we woke up and then we need to walk past living room, past the kitchen and go to the bedroom outside and walk back. So it wastes a lot of time to walk that far. Many times it will make us feel awake. We don't want to go to sleep anymore. We cannot go back to sleep anymore because we are awake already. So that's waste of time and waste of our feeling. It will be like that until our house breaks down or until we change the house to have the bathroom in the bedroom. So to decide well, we need to think about less waste as less as we can. So when we decide well, we will spend less money, spend less labor. It will be faster and it's comfortable to live in there. So see, this is the main principle that uh, I think the owner of the house need to consult, need to talk together very well why we decide the house. And then we need to go to the detail. In the detail when we built, after the principle, it will be the, go to the detail when we, before we build, before we design the house. The first detail that we need to think about is we need to go see other house, other building as much as we can. So we can see different idea, different thinking, different uh, function in each house. If we see a lot, we will get a lot of good idea. So it will help us to see the big picture, help us to see the complicated part of it too. So when we go see many buildings, we can choose what we like and then what we don't like, we don't need to take it, avoid it. So we can get every good part from many house together and then it will become the best for our house. So this part is important to go see many houses. The second detail that we need to think about is to think about sunlight. Which way the sunlight hit the wall? The sunlight 
in the morning and the sunlight in the afternoon is different. In the morning is quite cool sunlight, nice, not too hot. So we can welcome morning sunlight. And then in tropical country, sunlight in the afternoon is the hottest sunlight. So we need to try to design the house to avoid to let the wall we don't want the wall to expose to the sunlight in the afternoon because it's too hot. It will earthen house the wall is very thick, eight inches thick normally. So it will absorb a lot of heat from the sunlight in the daytime. And in the night nighttime it will release the heat inside the room. So it will make the room warm in the night time. So if we know that the sunlight in the afternoon comes from this side, it's good to have the roof hang over very far to protect, to prevent sunlight from our wall. That will be important. But in the morning, it's not too bad. It's okay. The second, uh, the next thing that we need to know is the rain. The rain is a problem, especially in tropical, because the rain that can cause a problem is the rain during uh, June, May or June or July. During these three months, the rain always comes with a big storm. It blow a lot. It come into the house easily. So it's good to uh, avoid the rain at that season during June, July. So if the rain come from this side, it's good to have the roof hang over or plan to plant something, block it. That will help to protect the rain to come into our room more. But the rain in another month in tropical normally is very nice. It comes straight from the sky and pouring rain a few minutes and stop. It's not cause any problem, but it's good because it helps us to sleep very well. Uh, so the rain that we don't want is the beginning of rain season because it comes with a storm. We need to prevent that. The next detail we need to think about is the wind. The wind that we don't like it is similar to the rain. It's the wind that comes in the beginning of rainy season. It is like the big storm. It comes together. So the wind this time, we need to prevent it. We don't want it. But the wind that we need is the wind between April, May. April and May is very hot in tropical. So how can we collect the wind? It's mainly it will be like a breeze. So we need to observe which direction the wind, the breeze come in May, April or May. If it comes to this direction, it's good to have door open to welcome the wind to come into the house. And then this is the, the, the sample of the design that we decide to collect the wind in the, uh, in the summer, in April and May. We notice that the wind come from this side. That's why we make, decide the house to have the big door open like that to uh, welcome the wind. But because of the door is so big, that's why we have to make the round building, five meters diameters in the middle of the door. So when the wind hit the side of the round building, it will go around the round building and it will be squeezed into a small door. Then it will make the wind stronger inside the room, make the breeze stronger inside the room. It makes the room cooler. This is the design that we, we use it. It is very important for us to use the nature to help us feel good. The next detail that we need to think about is the, how we control the temperatures inside the room. Mainly in tropical, the hot weather, the hot air will come from the roof about 70 percent. How can we prevent the roof? Prevent the heat come from the roof. Many times 
people built in tropical, they don't want to work well enough. So they just have normal roof, have thatch roof, have uh, metal sheet, make, make tie or something like that, but no good ceiling, no insulation on the ceiling. In tropical, if we put some insulation on the ceiling, make the temperature in the room very different too. Like many times when we do earthen house, on the uh, ceiling, we always add some, we do dip the straw into the liquid mud and then we put on top of the ceiling. It will be good insulation to prevent heat to come into the room. Some people call slip straw. Just make like a chocolate liquid and then dip the straw in there. So the straw, when we dip into the mud, it will not be burnt by fire. So it will not dangerous for us. That help to protect the fire. The fire will not burn it, but it's very good insulation. It protect the heat very well. Or we can do living roof. Living roof is very good because we, there are many layers of uh, soil and sand and plants and many things on top. So it's hard for the heat to come down. So only 30% of heat will come from the window and door. We can prevent it in that way. So when we do the roof in this way, we can make our room very nice. Many houses that we design like that, the temperature different from inside, lower than outside 10 degrees in the hottest day. I think it's worth it because we save a lot of energy. So living roof or use a lot of uh, insulation on the ceiling is very helpful. So sometimes we use bamboo or use natural roof. It helps too because natural roof is become good insulation, but it's not last very long. That is a problem. So it's good to mix together. So when we decide the house to think about temperature inside, how to control it, how to use it without using a lot of energy, I think it's very important. So when we understand this idea, this principle, this technique, we know how to design our house easily because it's very simple, very easy, especially when we build with mud. There's no mistake normally. It's only what we like or don't like. We just play with it. If we don't like, take it down, rebuild again. We did not pay more money, but we get more energy, more experience. That's good for us because clay is here. The soil is here. It's fun. So build your own house, design your own house. Then we have less worry because whenever, whenever anything happens, we know how to fix it. We know how to solve the problem. That is freedom.